The chain of responsibility is a behavioral design pattern that allows a request to be passed through a chain of handlers until at least one of them handles the request. Each handler in the chain can either handle the request or pass it to the next handler. Let's take an example to understand this better. Consider a customer service scenario where a customer contacts a sales support. The representative checks if they can handle the request, and if not, they pass it on to their supervisor. If the supervisor can't handle the request as well, they pass it on to their manager, and so on. This continues until someone in the chain can handle the request. Now let's take a look at how we can implement this pattern. The participants are handler, concrete handlers, and client. The handler defines an interface for handling requests. It can literally be as simple as an interface with just one method. We then create concrete classes that implement the handler interface. These classes represent the links in our chain. There are two key concepts to notice. Each link has a reference to the next handler in the chain. In this example, we are setting the link right on the constructor, but we could use setters instead. The other important concept is that each concrete handler has the ability to decide whether to process the request or forward it to the next handler. In this example, the concrete handler 1 handles the request only if it is less than 10 characters. If it is larger, it forwards it to the next successor. This process continues until the request is handled or until there are no more handlers in the chain. Let's have a look at the client now. The client's duty is to initiate the chain by invoking a handler, usually the first link in the chain. In this code snippet, we are also setting up the chain in the same class. However, this is not the client's responsibility. If we look at the execution logs, the small request is handled by the first handler, while the larger request is forwarded on the second one. So, what are the advantages of this pattern? The first one is that we have reduced coupling because the handlers have just the reference to the successor but they invoke it through the interface, they don't need to know the target class. So, there is not a direct dependency between an handler and another. For the very same reason, because there are no hard dependencies, we can swap the order of our handlers in the chain at runtime, and we can basically modify the behavior of our application without having to rewrite any line of code in the handlers. A popular application of the chain of responsibility is the filter chain used to handle HTTP requests in a web server like Tomcat. You could use a similar approach to model an API gateway that process a request and let it pass it through policies, message transformer, and a router. Keep in mind that when dealing with these patterns, there are always variations. In the chain of responsibility, you could swap the handler interface with an abstract class where you define the forwarding logic. In this case, you can make sure that all links in the chain get a chance to process the request. Another common approach is to model the chain as a different element in the structure of the pattern. The concrete endless stop having a reference to their successor and reference the chain instead, which is responsible to move the request along the chain. You can navigate my repository on GitHub. I'm leaving the link in the description. I try to keep the code as simple as I could so that we can focus on the pattern. If you want to help me out, feel free to create a pull request. Thank you for watching, like, subscribe and share. And now time to learn something new.